Hello there, YouTube. This is NecroStevo, and it's time for week two of the Indigo League of Legends. Now, for this week, we have the Venus Venusaur going up against the... Let's see, they are coached by Zai. I think we're just looking at the, the Sinnoh Dinos. Or the Dinos of Sinnoh, excuse me. Got a little bit reversed there. But, as a newcomer to the league, I was extremely excited to battle him. Um, fair warning, he actually didn't get a chance to prepare the way he wanted to for this battle. So he didn't get to bring the sets that he really wanted to. Uh, but, that is what happens as part of kind of the time management and having a league and having a schedule and kind of setting things up. And he said he was ready to go, so we went ahead and did it. Um, going into this battle, I was pretty concerned with his options that he could have for his team. Um, of course, in the Indigo League of Legends, you can Mega any Pokemon that you have access to. So having access to Charizard Y, Mega Latios, uh, we're banned Geng we're no Mega Gengar, fortunately. I don't have to worry about that. But those are both very powerful Mega Pokemon. So I went with Drappy on here just because I could trap Latios and Gengar. And then um, setting up Toxic Spikes against this team since Gengar is levitating, it would really, really pressure a lot of his offensive options. Uh, I also went with Choice Scarf Ditto here just because if he tried to set up with uh, Dragon Dance Charizard Y, or if he did set up with a Calm Mind Latios, I could just come in and copy those boosts. I brought my own Latios with, um, thanks to my girlfriend here for letting me use her Latios that she named Puff from her actual version where she let me soft reset and catch a good natured one. But this one's just going to be full out offensive, all four attacks of Thunderbolt, Dragon Pulse, Draco Meteor. Um, just trying to hit as many things on this team as possible. Uh, Fortress is very physically defensive, and it has Rocky Helmet just to try to come in on things like uh, Breloom. I even had Overcoat on Fortress to block Spore from Breloom. And then Mega Diancie, the linchpin of this team here. If I can break down something like Empoleon, then Mega Diancie kind of has a field day against the team, especially with access to Rock Polish, uh, Calm Mine. I actually ended up just bringing um, protect and three attacks this week, but Diancie has a lot of different options. We are just going to start off with Drapion here. I was worried that he would burn me, but I figured, eh, if he burns me, I'll, I'll, I'll deal with that. And I just went straight for knockoff. He went for taunt trying to predict the toxic spikes, which was not a bad play, but I knew Gengar might just burn me. I didn't think getting burned was a good exchange for toxic spikes, so I just went straight for knockoff. Now here he actually forgot that Drapion is part dark, I thought that he would go straight for the dragon type attack and not go for psychic, but his uh, inadvertent misstep there hits my Diancie pretty hard. Fortunately, I'm not Mega Evolved yet, so I have very, very nice defenses. Uh, we are going to Mega Evolve now. I do click Protect just in case he tries to stay in and go for another Psy Shock. When Mega Diancie evolves, of course, I lose those really, really nice defenses. So I just wanted to make sure I'd rather be in a position where I'm speed tying a possible Latios and he actually didn't have the right EVs on Latios, so there wasn't even a speed tie. What about sped him? Uh, I am going to bring in Fortress here on what I perceive to be. Either he's going to put up his rocks or he's going to go for a flash cannon. Fortress gets in pretty safely, and I get to go for stealth rocks. Um, I did have an opportunity to go for Volt Switch there, but I really wanted rocks up because they threaten his Infernape and the uh, Charizard. And so right here, I was just going to say, okay, Either he'll overpredict and go for a Dragon Pulse and he'll hit my Latios, uh, my Latios on switch in, or he'll go for the Flamethrower and then Latios can get in safely. Once the Stealth Rocks are up, his entry hazards aren't up, I decided to sacrifice my Fortress right there. Uh, now right here, I do bring in Diancie and then double switch into my Latios. Uh, number one, if he's gonna go for Solar Beam, if he'll use it if he has it right there. Uh, number two, Latias can come in safely here, and then I can outspeed him because, um, of course, Charizard only has base 100 speed. He pulls a switch of his own into Leafeon, and I was worried about Leafeon having knockoff or setting up using Swords Dance, and that's precisely what he has. With access to Chlorophyll, Leafeon can be a very speedy threat, and so I wanted to check him immediately with the very defensive Zapdos that I brought. Um, I do miss the Sun Boosted Heat Wave, which actually probably would have done a fair chunk since he's an offensive Latios. Uh, and Zapdos is no slouch in special attack. Uh, I do have Hidden Power Ice very nicely on this Zapdos, so um, I think I actually got this Zapdos from Heavy Metal Fairy on Twitter. Definitely go follow him if you ever need any cool giveaways of that sort, because he does a lot of different giveaways on his channel. But it definitely comes in clutch here, even after plus one to special defense, I'm able to 2 KO him, 
And so I, I'm thinking if he has Calm Mine and he has uh, Psy Shock, his other moves are probably Roost and Draco Meteor or Dragon Pulse. So I want to force him to go for Roost here, and then I will basically get a free switch to my Drapion as he goes for Roost. And then even though he has that plus two special attack, not worried because I do have Ditto in the back to copy those boosts. I can bring in Drapion here to hit him on the physical side to do a lot more damage. Uh, unfortunately, we did activate that Citrus Berry earlier, so Knockoff does not KO him. Uh, but since he did forget about Drapion being part dark, I'm able to dodge the, the Psy Shock and force him to go for a Draco Meteor, which does unfortunately drop Drapion, which I hate seeing Drapion go down. But now, since he is at minus two special attack, I know that Puff can eat up any hit that he wants to throw at me, barring a crit. And I knew Empoleon might be coming in here, but there was no reason to overpredict. If I hit Empoleon with a Life Orb Stab Dragon Pulse and then go for Thunderbolt, then I'm in a range um, normally where I should actually have a pretty good chance of KOing him with a Thunderbolt, even after the Leftover's recovery. Uh, but he is actually very, very specially bulky, so that doesn't even come close to KOing him, and he's unfortunately able to get up the Stealth Rocks against my team. Uh, I am just going to stay in here and keep on going for Thunderbolt. I could have switched up my moves, but I didn't really have a reason to do so. Um, he actually goes into Leafy on predicting the Thunderbolt, and I am getting a little bit of life orb damage racked up on me, but he also doesn't really have a switch into Latias, uh, especially a fully offensive Latias. And now that the sun is no longer up, my Latias will outspeed Chlorophyll, Leafy on, and KO it with a Dragon Pulse. So we're in a pretty good position here. He decides to go back out to Empoleon, and I'm not actually sure why he decided to do that because I outspeed him and from this range Thunderbolt will KO him and I'm not going to overpredict. Latias is basically here to soften everything up so that Diancie can sweep. So as long as things are taking damage, Latias is doing its job and um, I, I guess it's like a... this is getting puffed, I guess this is what that's called there when Latias completely smacks her whole team like this. But he brings out Infernape. I believe he said Infernate was missing the prop, the proper EVs too, so maybe it was a Scarf Infernate or something. That's just going to drop to a Psy Shock. And since Latias naturally outspeeds Charizard Y, Charizard Y is going down to a Thunderbolt even though it has great special defense. The Stealth Rocks that Fortress set up earlier are going to come in handy right there. And so with all those threats out of the way, that means his last Pokemon is the Latios. But since Latios doesn't have all those wonderful speed EVs, he's not going to outspeed us. And that means almost, uh, I think five of his Pokemon actually dropped to my uh, Latios. So that, and that, that battle was really indicative of time management as far as League go. And he did choose to go ahead and go forth with the battle. This is just an announcement for anyone that I'm battling. If you need more time, I understand. I breed my Pokemon, so don't feel weird taking more time. To prepare for battles uh, but I did enjoy the team that he brought I definitely thought it was a very very powerful pick out of the Pokemon that he had access to um, I just would have really liked to see how that would have turned out if uh, he had brought the Pokemon with the bright Eevees that he would have intended but uh, all right thank you guys very much for watching and this is another victory for the Venus Venusaur our next match is going to be up against sketchy Smeargle uh, which we actually, we lost to them in the final round of the playoffs in season two of the Inigo League of Legends. So there's some salt running deep in those veins and uh, we really need to get some payback there. So we'll be prepping really, really hard for that matchup and that'll be week three. In the meantime, if you enjoyed this video, click like. I, I hardly ever say that, but just, just click a like. I just want to see how many I can get. It might be interesting. And if you enjoyed the layouts and such, those were actually done by um, August, so I'll leave his information in the Twitter description because he did a fantastic job. Definitely want to uh, give props where props are due there. So thank you guys for watching, and we'll talk to you next time. Goodbye now.